Well, what is happening guys? My name is Jamie and today we have a special guest on the channel and it is none other, again, Zach D Productions. Hello everyone, how's it going? Yes, so Zach D Productions has joined us to uh, do part two of albums we have changed our mind on. It's basically gonna um, be exactly the same as the Metal Meltdown and my collab, except we got Zach D Productions. Oh boy. Now, he's got five albums that That's he wants right. to talk about. Because I felt like we had to have a part two. We had to have a part two of albums we have changed our mind on. Because I know you have a few. I will let you go first. Zach, take it away. Okay, so the first album I want to talk about is 13 by Black Sabbath. This was an album Ooh. that I never thought was really bad per se, but I only thought it was really average at best for some reason. Uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of Sabbath fans actually really like this album. I remember for the longest time I just couldn't understand why, but maybe like a few weeks ago I decided to um, give it another chance and now I really like the album. I think it's a great album actually. Um, and a pretty uh, cool finale to the Black Sabbath discography, I'd say. So that's one album that I've definitely changed my opinion on. Yes, 13 Black Sabbath is a very good album. I was like you as well. At first I didn't really enjoy it. Yeah. But I love how doomy that album is. Like God is Dead is such an awesome song. I just like how yeah. it kind of feels like a throwback to the 70s era of Black Sabbath. And that's why I really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, it's like a throwback of that doomy Sabbath that we had uh, throughout the debut album. So I feel like that this album was a throwback to the debut album. Right. Especially with the guitar riffs and great choice, Zach. Great choice. I was a bit, I was in the same boat as you where I didn't really enjoy it at first, but now I really like it. Yeah. And it's pretty high in my ranking as well. And Loner's a really great song too. All right. So thanks, Zach, for your pick. My first pick, Slipknot, the debut album, where once I absolutely adored this album, well, it was my favorite Slipknot album. And now as I'm listening to it again, over the past few years, I'm starting to really not enjoy it anymore. I just feel that there are stronger albums than the debut album of Slipknot. Oh, really? There are some fantastic... <laughs> I just feel that I always much more better than the debut album. And even Subliminal Verses is better than the debut album. And the controversial, <laughs> I think All Hope Is Gone is better than the debut album. Oh, wow. Uh, I wouldn't say point... <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say the point five grade chapter is better than the debut album. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I've always thought the oh. debut was one of their best. Well, I thought it was too. I thought it was too, but I don't know if it's the overplayed factor, but I yeah. just feel there are better better albums than a debut album. Wait and Bleed is a classic. Spin It Out is absolutely amazing. If you ever go to a Slipknot concert, it's absolutely amazing when they perform Spit It Out because everyone everyone drops down and everyone just jumps up and, says, and screams, Fuck me! I'm all white on enemies! Fuck me! It's so damn good. <laughs> yeah. So damn good. Yeah, Zach needs to go to a Slipknot show. There's some fillers like Liberate, Liberate. Yeah, I used to enjoy it. Prosthetics. Prosthetics is an okay song. But there are some fillers on this album. That's why um, it drags the album down now. But my God, I used to love this album, but I've changed my opinion on it. I've changed my opinion on it. If I had to give it a rating, if I had to give it a review, I'd probably give it a 6.5 out of 10. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> the album I feel like does yeah. have a little bit of filler to it. What is your number four pick? My number four pick, I'm going to go with Outlive by Demon Hunter. I used to really like this album a lot whenever it came out, uh, mainly because that was just the biased Demon Hunter fan in me whenever the album first came out a few years back, and over time I've grown to be kind of bored with the album, I guess. like I, Nowadays I just find the album kind of boring, super hard to go back to, and anytime I am in the mood to go back to certain songs from the album, I can't get through the entire song basically. I mean it's a really hard album to get through I guess. Um, and the album just feels like it has no identity compared to Demon Hunter's other albums. This is one of those albums that I feel like it doesn't know if it wants to be heavy or if it wants to be super melodic, you know. It's one of those albums for me and 
was a big fan of it and listened to it a lot back in the day when it came out. But nowadays, I think it's one of Demon Hunter's worst albums. That album is so shit. It really is. <laughs> It's so shit. Look, I listened to it um, a few weeks ago, and yeah, I agree. It's definitely the weakest album. Um, I can't tell you what a good song is on that album, to be honest. Um, I suppose the one that sounds like Breaking Benjamin, Without You, oh, right. uh, from Breaking Benjamin, that song. I can't remember what the song was. Was it Cold Blood or something Was it like Cold Blood? I can't remember. I think it was Cold Blood. Yes, okay. that's a really good song. The rest of this album fucking shit. <laughs> I agree. I don't like that album. If I had to do a ranking, it'd probably last. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think nowadays it would be last for me too. Outlive? Outlive can get in the bin. <laughs> Outlive would be at Out the bottom for me. The songwriting on that album, some of these songs aren't as catchy as the other songs. Right. From the other albums. Ghost, Maliora. So, um, I know Zach doesn't like, I know Zach doesn't like Ghost that much, he can't really get into him, but I was in the same boat as him where I just couldn't get into Ghost, and this was one of those albums, Maliora, that I didn't like at first, but I started to really grow to love it throughout the next year or two after listening to this album. This was my first introductory album to Ghost, and I didn't like it at first, but now all these songs are just absolute bangers. They really are. Like from the pinnacle to the pit, from the pinnacle to the pit, <laughs> to seriously, um, He Is, Money Dust, just so many good friggin' songs on this album. I can't believe I, I didn't like this. I can't believe I didn't like this album at first. Now it's my favorite Ghost album. My favorite Ghost album. I love Ghost now. I was one of those haters as well. I didn't like Ghost, but now I absolutely adore Ghost. I mean, what's, I got no, I, I don't really have much say in that since I haven't really listened to it. I wouldn't say that I hate the band. I don't know what it is about them that kind of throws me off, but I've just always had a hard time getting into them. I believe. Uh, I believe one Maybe time I actually tried sound. giving them a chance. A few years back maybe the overall production the sound or even his vocals it i don't know i feel like it might be a combination of a bunch of things uh plus uh, i do find them to be kind of overhyped as well it's interesting because for me it was the vocals yeah the vocals it was also it was also the overall production on the albums um, but somehow this album, Meliora, clicked to me. Some of these songs are pretty heavy as well. From the Pinnacle to the Pit is a pretty heavy song. And Seriously is amazing as well. For those that are saying Ghost is it metal, well, Ghost is metal on this, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting, your opinion as well, Zach, on Ghost. So my number three pick will be The Order of Things by All That Remains. This is an album that I've actually just recently reviewed on my channel and I've said that it was an album that I actually enjoyed at first listen but nowadays I don't really re enjoy the album at all now I mean I'd honestly give the album like a 2 out of 10 to be honest it's got a few decent tracks but overall it's not very good has a lot of forgettable tracks the songs are too bland and obviously it's way different than the older albums from All That Remains, and it was overall just a step in the wrong direction for the band at the time, but Victim of the New Disease, the last album, I think um, is actually a step in the right direction, so that is one good thing I can say about All That Remains nowadays, but The Order of Things, it's not a very good album, and it's easily one of their weakest. Interesting, I've never really uh, dipped my toes into All That Remains. We'll probably have to check him out. So, what 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 was this album that rubbed you the wrong way? Uh, just the overall blandness and just how the songs were just so forgettable for me. So, are they melodic death or metalcore or what? I always thought that they were metalcore. I think a lot of people can agree that they're metalcore. I mean, I've heard arguments metalcore. that their early stuff is mellow death, but I'd say they're metalcore. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never heard that album before. Yeah, if yeah. you check out. Uh, if you check out All That Remains, I'd highly recommend The Fall of Ideals, which, to me, that's their best album. A lot of people love this album, they adore this album, although I did enjoy this album once, but holy shit, 
I hate this album now. It's Disturbed and the Sickness. Oh boy. Disturbed and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are a few songs that I love, like Stupefy, The Game, Down With The Sickness. But the rest, man, the rest are just all fillers. And why would you have a song called Dropping Plates? Dropping plates on your ass, bitch, plates on your ass. <laughs> I mean, this is just edgy new metal shit. It really is. It's oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know you love edgy stuff, Zach. All right. <laughs> um, it's tasteful, this album now. I used to love this album. And then I discovered greater music than mm. Disturbed. Disturbed were one of my favorite bands once. Yeah, once I discovered Dream Theater, holy shit, every, every other band became... <laughs> Dream Theater is life-changing. <laughs> oh, Dream Theater is life-changing, that's for down with the sickness is a very good song i really enjoy that song but i have overplayed it so much it's ridiculous and stupefy is fun and the game but the rest like fear numb want conflict shouts just all fillers man god of the mind is an okay song meaning of life but yeah the rest yeah i don't like this album at all it's way too long way too long oh wow and i used yeah i used to play this album a lot i haven't played this album for like freaking two years now because I don't want to listen to it anymore I don't want to listen to it um have you heard this album before I honestly have never listened to a disturbed album in full uh they're kind of another band wow. that doesn't really interest me that much I mean I don't think they're bad or anything but I I think there's a lot of things that kind of turn me off a little bit um yeah not too crazy about David Draymond's vocals, for one. Uh, he's not a bad yeah. singer, but it's just one of those vocalists that, I don't know, kind of turn me away, you know? Yeah. So he's got, a, he's got a really nice voice. Like, mm -hmm. If you listen to Sound of Silence, he's got a, such a beautiful voice. But I feel that this album is probably the second weakest in their discography now. Um, we don't talk about their latest album, Evolution. Holy oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> what a pile of shit that album is. Oh, a heard. corporate money-grabbing <laughs> album. This album is seen to be a classic for a lot of fans. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. I've moved on, and I think this album is trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zach, so what is your number two pick? Number two pick... Um, this one actually might make some people happy, especially for those who like classic rock. But for my number two pick, I would actually go with Physical Graffiti by Led Zeppelin. Now, this is an album that I actually used to have closer to the bottom of my Led Zeppelin ranking, but now it's higher for me. I think it's maybe one of their best uh, albums. I do think it's still kind of overrated but even in saying that i still really like the album i think it's a solid album and i mean it's got cashmere on it which is probably one of their best songs of to course. be honest yeah wow okay i didn't realize you thought this album was one of the weakest but like like me i think houses the holly is the weakest led zeppelin album nowadays i actually yeah. might like physical graffiti more than Houses of the Holy, which that would have been completely opposite if you were to ask me even last year or so. But yeah. physical graffiti has really grown on me. Oh yeah, like Cash Me and got In the Light. That's an amazing oh, song. Yeah. In the in my time of dying, hello, what an incredible song that is. Right. The double album. Yeah, it is. It's a long album. Yeah, it took me a while to get into physical graffiti as well, but I. I just can't, I just can never get into House of the Holy. I've been listening to Led Zeppelin for I don't know how many years now, but I've always thought Houses, Houses of the Holy was their weakest. Hmm. That is interesting. An album that I didn't like at first, that I thought it was the weakest album off their discography, and it was with another singer, of course, it's Blaze Bailey, and we're talking about The X Factor by Iron Maiden. Yeah, so I didn't like this album at first. I thought it was the weakest, and I thought the album was shit, like really shit. Over the past few years, I've started to really enjoy this album. I just love how dark this album is, and I just love how proggy this album is. At first, I didn't enjoy Blaze Bailey's vocals, you know? Yeah. Then I started to discover his other work, 
his solo work. Oh, wow. And his solo work is absolutely fantastic. And then going back to The X Factor, I said, whoa, this is fantastic. This is a really good album. Like, you got Sign of the Cross. The Sign of the Cross. So damn good. You also got Man on the oh. Edge and Judgment of Heaven. And yeah. A lot of great songs. Oh. Fortunes of War, Fortunes of War. How catchy is that song? But I suppose one of the weakest songs, in my opinion, off the album is Blood on the World's Hands. Is a song that I do like now, but I, I know I smashed it on one of my videos of the metal songs that I hate from the bands I love video. I absolutely smashed that song. But now after listening to Blood on the World's Hands again, I actually don't mind it, but I feel that is their weakest song. Overall, I just love how proggy this album is by Iron Maiden um, and how dark this album is. Blaze Bailey's vocals definitely made things very dark on this album. I just love his low monotone vocals. Yeah, I don't mind Virtual Eleven as well now. That's, that's actually really grown on me as well. But overall, I don't think there's any bad Iron Maiden album now. Yeah, that, that is a fair thing to say. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way about the X Factor, actually. Um, there was actually a time where I wouldn't say I've ever hated it, but there was a time where I thought it was only, like, meh. But now, I think it's a great album. I think it might actually go down as their most underrated album, or at least one of their most underrated. Yeah, it's a really good album. Like, I don't know why I hated it so much. Now, the, the lead, my least favorite album is The Final Frontier, uh, a Bruce Dickinson album, so <laughs> that's surprising. If I had to do an, an album ranking uh, last year or a year and a half ago, it would have been The X Factor Dead Last. Oh, wow. I listened to this album again this week, and I said, holy shit, this album is really good. My number one pick will have to be Vapor Trails by Rush. There was a time where I thought that this was Rush's weakest album. Not so much anymore. Um, now, it still wouldn't be in the top five or anything, but and it's definitely not one of their best, but I don't think it's their weakest anymore like I once thought. I mean, there's a lot of great songs on this album. One Little Victory, How It Is, the title track, um, and many others. I mean, it's just a really great album. Uh, I know some people complain about the production, but honestly, the production is something I can get past, to be honest. I, I think um, I, I don't mind too much, if you know what I'm saying. But yeah, Vapor Trails, yeah. not a bad album. I, I mean, I used to not really like it as much, but now I think it's a great album. Yeah, they did a remix, didn't they? Yeah, like like over a decade after, I think. Yeah, no, I actually enjoyed this album as well. Like, Earthshine is probably my favorite song. Off that the is album. a good one, yeah. It's a heavy sort of album, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say it's one of their heaviest albums, actually. Yeah. So I don't know why people shit on it. It's a really good album. Maybe it's because it's the Little Rush era. I'm not too sure, but maybe. Yeah, it's a it's a good album. One Little Victory is a fun fun song. So Zach D Productions, thank you for joining us. Would you like to say goodbye? Uh, sure. Thanks for having me, Jamie. And don't forget to subscribe to Jamie's channel if you aren't already. So, thanks so much for having me. Take care. And don't forget to subscribe to Zach's channel. He is nearly at 800 subs, so make sure you go and subscribe to him right now. We would like to see him get to 1,000 subs. That would be good. So, thanks, Zach, for joining me. Comment below the albums that have changed your mind. So, keep sketching on the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.